I hope you guys didn't forget about me. I'm back and I'd like to talk about a little bit about what I know about the production of acrylic and I think you're going to find this really interesting. So welcome to episode 25 of Sign House TV. So with acrylic we have two main grades, cast acrylic and extruded acrylic. So in terms of the production, these are completely different processes. All acrylic starts from a chemical component called methyl methacrylate. And this is, a, this is combined with a catalyst to start the polymerization process. When you reach almost 90% uh, polymerization is what you have when you have a sheet of acrylic. It's hard, it's almost, in cast acrylic they say it's I think roughly 95% polymerized. In extruded it's like 99% polymerized. Uh, but the polymerization st process starts as a liquid uh, that starts as MMA, a liquid, highly flammable liquid. Once the catalyst is introduced and starts polymerizing, it becomes viscous and harder and harder. So with cast acrylic, the production process is kind of labor intensive, quite simple. What happens is they take that liquid, they add the catalyst, it starts to become a more viscous. And then in every factory uh, cast acrylic plant, they use actual glass plates. So if you're making an eight by four or 1.2 meter by 2.4 meter le length sheet, they have glass panels which are slightly bigger than the acrylic size sheet. Uh, what they do is they uh, take those glass panels which are perfectly clean, perfectly smooth. They uh, create a spacing between them. So if you're making a three millimeter sheet, they would have a spacer, put a silicone bead around it. This is just to try and imagine it. There's a gap in between it and they create a spacing around the sheets. Imagine there's a, uh, there's a, <laughs> there's a gap of three millimeters around the sheet and Within, they create a smaller gap and they pour that viscous material inside the glass plates. Once it's introduced to that, this plate goes into an oven, starts the heating process. Say a 3 millimeter sheet has to sit in there for 12, anywhere from 10 to 12 hours. Then it goes through a cooling process. And then finally, once they remove the glass plates, you have almost 95% polymerization, a cast sheet which can be, uh, which is masked, ready to ship out to a customer. Whereas in the extruded acrylic pr production process, what you have is, a very long machine which is uh, maybe around 25-30 meters long in a factory. The, the raw material is already in PMMA form but in pellets. And that pellet is introduced at one end and the computers they put in all the settings and parameters and out the other end depending on the size and thickness they've defined out comes your sheets of clear or opal or color depending on the combination of the raw material with pigments. So both are completely different. So, but why use one or the other and why is one more advantageous? Cast acrylic is really advantageous because it has a lot more forgiveness in terms of production, in, in terms of fabrication techniques. Um, you can use any type of blade usually, you can use any type of drill bit, you can cut through it. Uh, and another big advantage with cast acrylic is that you can, uh, you're easily available to buy a lot, so many different colors because when you make it in these plates, usually every factory has like an MOQ of a stack of plates, which might be 10 or 20 max. And that's all you need to give for one production, uh, minimum order quantity for one color and one thickness. Whereas if you're producing it on that machine from one end, you have to put almost five tons of raw material of PMMA with the pigment so that you get a viable, economically viable production. So five tons of, five tons of material means maybe in a single thickness, you have to produce 500 or 800 sheets, which is a lot. So this is a disadvantage, uh, especially with the availability of colors in, in extruded. And then uh, with cast acrylic, you, have, uh, you can create different textures easily. So all our uh, satin sheets, for example, are made with perfectly textured, uh, those glass panels, instead of glossy finish, they have perfectly satin textures on it. So that once you remove the glass mold of it, you have a perfectly smooth uh, and perfectly even texture on both sides, which is great for light diffusion. So this is very important, especially in the cast production process. And you can make a few colors alone. So another big advantage of actually extruded over cast is actually the thickness tolerance. Many of you might have noticed that uh, with cast acrylic, you have sometimes uh, lower, if you order a 10 mm sheet, it might be 9.5 in the middle. This is because some manufacturers, the tolerance is plus or minus, plus or minus 10%. So a 10 mm sheet might be only 9.5 in the middle because when it is in between that glass panel, the viscous liquid, and it starts moving around, most of the material will start moving to the edges and then you will have maybe perfect thickness on the edge and a little dip in between. So this affects the uh, thickness tolerance, but you have advantages in different areas. So this is something uh, I wanted to explain about like what are the pros and cons of cast and extruded. 
Hope that you found that interesting. Something important I wanted to tell all our customers and uh, team about is also, you must have been noticing the cost of acrylic has drastically been increasing every month, month on month. And this is not because we want to increase it. We have never wanted to increase the prices on our customers. It's because we are forced to by the manufacturers. And it's not even our manufacturers like Astari Glass or Yearlong. They are forced by the raw material producers who produce MMA. There are only a handful, Lucite, Mitsubishi, Evonik, and then a couple of small ones like Kaohsiung Monomer. Handful, literally, of uh, raw material providers. And during certain periods, they decide to reduce the production of the raw material limit supply. And it's not just ac acrylic is a very small buyer of acrylic, uh, MMA raw material. There's other large industries like the paint industry, automotive parts, who buy at higher prices. So the, the acrylic sheet industry is actually the most, uh, the least important, you could say. So they have to bear, they have to bear a lot of these price increases during shortages. And every month and month, we've been experiencing uh, a lot of these price increases. And sometimes we pass it on, sometimes we don't, we absorb it. So this is partly the reason of the uh, price increase. But if you think about just 18 months ago, actually acrylic prices were the lowest they've ever been ever and ever. Because at that time there was an excess supply of material. So it, from raw material providers. And this was a big reason that 18 months ago the price was extremely low. So we hope in the coming few months that the price will stabilize and start to lower. And this all depends on those couple of manufacturers. So uh, what we are trying to do is make sure that you get best, the best material from reliable manufacturers and it's always avail available so that you can do your job. So you can count on us for that all the time. So that was uh, a lot but not completely explained version of production of acrylic and the dynamics of the market for acrylic. I'm sure you might have a lot more questions. Feel free to comment, send questions. I'd be happy to answer them so that I can get into more detail or even talk to you directly about it. Thank you very much for watching this episode. <laughs> that you might not know. Forget about me. On this episode, I'll talk about a little bit. The first one is better. Anyway, it's good, it's good. I'm looking forward to telling you all guys. <laughs> oh. Uh. Uh. No, that's so true. Uh. Yeah.